All right, so we have this weird shaped beam and we want to figure out how much uh, reaction occurs at location, let's see, the overall resultant, excuse me, reaction at pin B for this problem, okay? Where shall we start? Free body diagram. You've learned well, okay? So here we've got this set up, something like this, okay? So now what? There is a sketch, reasonably okay sketch, of the body that I'm trying to work with. What forces act on it? Okay, we have a pin at point B. So I have two components of reaction at point B. This would be, I'll call this uh, R, B, Y, and I'll call this R, B, X. Okay, I have a, you know, kind of tacitly established my coordinate system, so I will more explicitly establish my coordinate system. Okay, what else? Okay, yeah, so I've got a force right here. That force, F2, is 350 pounds. Okay. I also have what? Okay, I'm going to show it down here because it actually doesn't really make a difference showing it like pointing at it versus pointing down like I have it shown there and it gives me more space to draw it. What do I have there? Okay, F1 is 860 pounds. Okay, what else do I have? Okay. I've got this force over here since it's a roller uh, at A, I only have a force perpendicular to the surface it rolls on. Okay. So I put that in, and I don't actually know what that value is yet, so let me just call that F sub A. Okay. Now what else should I have on my free body diagram to make my life easier? Okay. So I probably do know something here, right? This angle right here was 29 degrees. That's a good one to have. What else? Okay. I know these radii. Let me, instead of expressing the radius values themselves, let me show what, you know, is probably going to really matter more on this problem. I'm going to want to know how far is it from the line of action of FA to the point around which I'm probably going to sum moments, which might be uh, point B. Okay, how far is that? It's the diameter, which is twice the radius, so this would be 26 feet. Okay. Now, how far is it from the uh, point I'm summing moments around to this point? Right? Well, it looks here like this point is essentially, you know, this is a 90 degree angle right here. So, this point right here is going to be one radius to the right of point B. Okay? How about the height? like this length right here. That should also be one radius, right? So this will be 13 feet. What else might matter? Maybe that this is 13 feet here. Okay. And that should be about everything that I might need on my free body diagram. So what do I do with all that? Where's a good place? To, yeah, so someone suggests, what if we sum moments? So I'm going to sum moments, and where do you want to sum moments around? Okay. We can choose point B. It's a pretty safe guess usually to think about trying to sum moments around a, like a pin on a, lot of these, uh, uh, on a lot of these 2D problems like this. Okay, so what are my influences rotationally around pin B? So let's start on the left. F A. 
does a clockwise or counterclockwise influence around point B? Clockwise, since I'm taking counterclockwise to be positive in my uh, assumption direction, then I'll say this is negative FA times 26 feet. Okay, then what? Plus 350 times what? 13. Why is it plus? It tends to be a counterclockwise influence around point B. Then I have to deal with this 860, which means I've got to break it into components, right? Let's deal with the horizontal component first, okay? So I, the horizontal component would act right here. What direction does that tend to rotate the body? Counterclockwise, right? To the right at a location below would tend to try to make this thing rotate counterclockwise, right? So um, I would uh, I'd take that 860 pounds, multiply by the cosine of 29 degrees to get the horizontal component, and then multiply that by 13 feet, which is the vertical length from that line of action to the point B, right? Then what? Okay, next I'm going to deal with the vertical component, which goes right there, and you'll see they're pushing down at a location to the right of the pivot point would have a tendency to rotate it clockwise. So someone over there suggested we do a negative, and I agree, negative 860 uh, pounds times the sine of 29 degrees times 13 feet gives me the influence of that vertical component. Okay, we set all this equal to zero. So we can quickly get the answer to this because the only thing I don't know is FA. So I'll put this in as um, negative x times 26 oops, plus 350 times 13 plus uh, 860 times cosine of 29. Uh, make sure your calculator's in the right angle mode, by the way, whenever you're doing these. So I am in degree mode, so I'm, in, I'm good. Um, times 13 minus 860 times sine of 29 degrees uh, times 13 equals 0. Shift solve. We're going to solve for the x value there. It comes out to be 342.6, okay, and that will be in pounds. What's next? Okay, we can now sum forces in the x and y. Okay, so what do we have in the x? RBx. Then what? Plus 860 pounds times the cosine, 29 degrees, minus 350 pounds. Anything else horizontally? Okay. So what that allows us to do is find RBX. RBX will just be equal to 350 minus 860 times the cosine of 29. Okay, what does the negative value mean here? Okay, it means that the direction that I assumed is the wrong direction. Okay, so 402.17 Is it a problem that I chose or I assumed the wrong direction at the beginning? Nope, because all I have to do is interpret, if I have a negative value here, I interpret that with respect to the arrows that I drew on my figure, and I'm back to understanding it, okay? It means it's not a rightward force, it's a leftward force, okay? All right, so what's next? 
okay? Summing forces in the Y, I have FA, which is 342, 342.6 pounds, okay? What else? Plus RBY, minus 860 uh, times the sine of 29 degrees. Okay, does that take care of all of my vertical components? Set that equal to zero and solve for RBY. Okay, it looks like what RBY will be is uh, 860 times the sine of 29 degrees, okay, uh, minus 342.6, which would give me 74.336. Okay, but what did the question actually ask for? Okay, it wants the magnitude of the overall resultant reaction at B, right? So how do I get that? Okay, you take the square root of the sum of the squares of these uh, magnitudes RBX and RBY. And when we do that, we should end up with the correct answer. So we'll take the square root. By the way, you can use this answer key. It's really nice. Um, and we can then put in 402.17 squared. So that ends up giving us 408.98 pounds. And hopefully, that's one of the choices. Okay. Any questions? <laughs>